So what I'm going to do uh, today is actually talk to you about some work that we've been doing trying to dissect the in vivo antiviral mechanism or mechanisms of HIV-specific broadly neutralizing antibodies. As you've heard throughout uh, the day, we have multiple different broadly neutralizing antibodies that are available. They target different epitopes. Uh, many of them that are circled are in uh, uh, clinical development, and I'm sorry if your, yours isn't up there. It's hard to keep this uh, list updated. Uh, and each antibody has you know, a, a different uh, degree of potency and breadth. Uh, and uh, one thing that we know about virtually all of these antibodies, any one of these antibodies that has actually been given to viremic individuals has shown a decrease uh, in plasma viremia, uh, as seen here in the original paper uh, from Michelle Neusenzweig's group. Uh, but, you know, despite the fact that we, we know uh, there's an antiviral effect, we don't know if this is all mediated uh, by uh, neutralization uh, because everyone likes to talk about ADCC and the fact that broadly neutralizing antibodies, uh, you know, if you put them into an ADCC assay in vitro, they will mediate ADCC. And so the question becomes, is this mechanism somewhat operative in the antiviral effect that we see uh, in uh, viremic individuals? So we set out uh, to look at this, and in order to do that, we had to go back uh, in the literature uh, to the original Perelson and Ho paper uh, from 1996. So for the older people in the uh, audience, you all remember this and the mathematical equations that were involved. But for the younger people like Costas, uh, I'll, I'll take you through this a, a bit. So uh, basically what, these pap what this paper and subsequent papers showed uh, is that when you have plasma viremia, almost all of that plasma viremia is maintained because this virus infects newly activated CD4 T cells, which then go on to active and productive infection and dump a uh, virus back out. Uh, into the plasma, uh, and the rate of that production equals the rate of decay uh, of this uh, compartment. So you get to a steady state. Uh, Long-lived uh, populations of cells or uh, virus uh, spilling out of the latent reservoir really provides minimal amounts of virus. So in terms of the dynamics of this compartment, you really only have to look at this side of the equation. Um, now. When you give antiretroviral therapy, what that means is that if you block infection here, all the cells that are already infected are going to continue to put out virus uh, through their normal life cycle. So even when you give antiretroviral uh, therapy, there is a delay until you start to see the antiviral effect. Now, if uh, antibodies are acting just through neutralization, then they're really acting as entry inhibitors, and you would continue to see this delay before you see the decline. If, however, ADCC is operative, you'll start to see killing uh, of cells, and you'll see an immediate uh, decline. So one thing that we could look at is whether we see this plateau or, or this delay in antiviral effect in our clinical trials. So we went back to our original study of VRCO1, uh, in viremic individuals, and here's the, the normalized data. And while there's a bunch of stuff bouncing around in the first two days, it looks as though it's pretty flat for about two days before we see the antiviral effect. This suggests immediately that probably neutralization is a major component of the antiviral effect. However, what if we go in now and uh, what if we go in and, and modify the FC region of an antibody to either increase or decrease its interaction with NK cells? Uh, would we then see a difference uh, in these decay curves? So you could hypothesize that if we eliminated ADCC by eliminating this interaction, that we would see a slower decline uh, in virus de uh, plasma virus decay. And if we made a modification to increase uh, FC gamma receptor uh, binding, we would actually see an immediate and steeper decline in virus decay because you'd immediately start to eliminate a virus spilling into this pool. 
So that's what we decided to do in uh, shiv-infected monkeys. And the two modifications we decided to, to make uh, were the well-known LALA mutation that's been used uh, a lot by Dennis Burton and others to, to look at protection against infection. This uh, leads to reduced binding to FC gamma receptor 1, 2, and 3 uh, and eliminates ADCC. And the DEL or DEL mutation, which increases uh, uh, FC gamma receptor 3A and increases ADCC. Uh, and so we made these modifications uh, on VRCO7523. Uh, and this just shows where those modifications are. So, so the LALA mutation and the DEL mutations are in a region of uh, the FC. Uh, which interacts with FC gamma receptors, we made these on the background of the LS mutation uh, so that we would have longer half-life antibodies. And the LS uh, mutation is in a different region which interacts with the, the uh, neonatal FC receptor uh, and doesn't affect uh, any uh, of the FC gamma receptor uh, binding. So here's the, the in vitro results when we made these modifications. So once again, they were based upon uh, VRCO7 523LS. This just shows neutralization. If we make the LALA mutation, panel of viruses, it doesn't, the, the modification does not affect neutralization. And we're going to use monkeys that are infected with SHIV SF162P3, and you see the neutralization is unaffected. ADCC, however, is... Uh, significantly uh, decreased uh, by the LALA mutation, as is C1Q binding, complement binding. If we then uh, make the DEL mutation, once again, we don't affect neutralization. We do increase ADCC in vitro, but we also wipe out uh, C1Q binding. So we, we eliminate uh, C1Q, uh, or complement binding. So. Having made these modifications, here's the experiment. So we take uh, non-human primates, uh, Indian origin rhesus macaques. We infect them with SHIV 162P3 for about six weeks until they reach a steady state of uh, virus replication. Then about 48 hours before we start infusing antibodies, we start measuring their plasma virus. Uh, we then uh, infuse either VRCO7523 LS or the LALA or DEL mutated antibodies, about 10 uh, monkeys per group, intravenously at 20 milligrams per kilogram, a single infusion. We measure plasma virus multiple times in the first 24 hours and then daily for seven days. This just shows the PK of those. So in black is the LS mutant uh, and, or the LS antibody. Uh, the LALA has slightly better pharmacokinetics, and the DEL uh, has uh, worse, and we'll get back to why that probably is. However, despite the lower levels of the DEL antibody, uh, the IC80 is here, so we still have uh, well in excess of what we should uh, need uh, to uh, inhibit uh, uh, SHIV-162P3, even in the DEL-infused monkeys. So here are the, the raw data uh, of the plasma viral loads in these monkeys. So we also included uh, three monkeys that got no antibody and three monkeys that uh, got the uh, anti-Ebola antibody, MAB114, as controls. And you see for them, there was no antiviral effect. For the monkeys that got LS, uh, there was a decrease. The LALA, there was a decrease. And DEL, there was a decrease. So, a few things that you can see is that virus was fairly stable prior to the uh, administration of the monoclonal antibodies. All monkeys that were given some form of VRCO7523 had a decrease in plasma viral load. And importantly, none of them actually reached undetectable. So we had a, a good plasma virus uh, uh, quantification in order to calculate the decay. So now if I just move those over to this side, the other thing that you can uh, see is that uh, virus loads started to level off after four days in some monkeys. So if you look at this monkey, it's easiest to see in the monkeys at the very top. So after about four or five days, you start to lose the antiviral effect. So we didn't really want to uh, calculate slope uh, using anything after five days. 
In addition, uh, as we saw in the human clinical trial, in most of these monkeys, in the first 24 hours, for reasons that are unclear to us, the plasma virus load bounces all over the place. It tends to go down and then pop back up. It's usually back up by 6 to 12 hours. Uh, but we basically decided not to use that ver uh, the, the plasma viral loads within that period uh, to calculate the slope because there's something going on. And you can actually see in the monkeys that, that got MAB114, totally unrelated to HIV, we're seeing that too. So there's something about the infusion uh, of a uh, human antibody into these monkeys that uh, causes some, some strange things to happen. So we basically used a virus load from one to four days uh, to calculate the slopes. And here uh, are those data. Uh, so here are the actual data points that were used to calculate the slopes. And so then the question is, uh, you know, do we have a difference in this slope versus that slope and that slope? And so here's, here's the big reveal. Uh, if we look at the group means, what you can see is that the LS antibody, the unmodified antibody, has the steepest slope, the greatest antiviral effect. If you make the LALA mutation or you make the DEL mutation, which increases ADCC activity, you actually have less slope. Uh, and so that's shown over here. It's quite highly statistically significant. And if you actually calculate a difference in the slope, that's about 21% difference. So in this model system with this virus, uh, with this antibody, eliminating or increasing FC gamma receptor binding decreases the slope of plasma virus by 21%. So you can also use that to say 21% of the antiviral activity of brco 7523 ls is dependent upon FC-mediated activity. So Obviously, at this point, our, our heads were starting to spin because why doesn't increased FC gamma receptor binding lead to increased ADCC and a more rapid decline in plasma virus? So we started to try and investigate this. First thing we wanted to know is, you know, are, uh, when you infuse the DEL antibody, are you actually getting uh, the DEL antibody on the uh, surface of FC gamma receptor 3 expressing cells. So we can look at that by uh, looking at a fluorescently labeled anti-ID or RSC3 on these cells. And what you can see here, so this is uh, monkey after uh, infusion of VRCO7 523LS LALA or DEL. Uh, this is pre-infusion. 30 minutes after, pre-infusion 30 minutes after, on NK cells or on monocytes. And what you can see is in the monkeys that got the LALA, uh, even 30 minutes after infusion, you see no uh, antibody uh, bound to cells that express FC gamma receptor 3. Whereas uh, when you infuse the DEL antibody, all of the NK cells uh, have the antibody on their cell surface, and that expression is directly related to expression of FC gamma receptor 3 or CD16. You can see sort of the same thing with monocytes, except the affinity uh, for FC gamma receptor 1 on, on monocytes is not quite as strong, uh, but you can see that you're getting some uh, binding to, to monocytes. So we went further and said, okay, that's 30 uh, minutes. How about out to six hours? This just shows that with the LALA mutation, you're not getting any change uh, in expression on these cells. Uh, here in NK cells with the DEL mutant antibody, it goes up, stays up for six hours. Uh, same thing on monocytes and same thing on granulocytes. And I can show the summary data on NK cells. CD16 positive monocytes, CD16 negative monocytes, myeloid dendritic cells, and granulocytes. What you see is that you know, over the course of five days, the LALA mutant antibody isn't binding uh, or present on the surface. Any of these cells, uh, you can see a little bit uh, of binding with the unmodified antibody. But with the DEL modified antibody, virtually all the NK cells, all the other cells that express FC gamma receptors are uh, basically are decorated uh, with uh, the DEL antibody. So looks like these cells you know, are pre-armed, should be killing. So 
Next thing we said is, well, let's look at the transcriptomic analysis of these NK cells. So when you infuse the DEL antibody, you know, are you energizing them? Are they shutting off or are they uh, looking like they're ready to kill? So we sorted NK cells from the monkeys before one hour and three days after antibody infusion for RNA sequencing. These are the top pathway analyses for the DEL infused uh, uh, monkeys one hour after infusion. And one of the top hits is NK, uh, natural killer cell mediated cytotoxicity. So looks like these are uh, ready to kill. This just shows uh, the, the over time, so pre one hour and three days uh, after infusion for the unmodified antibody, the LALA or the DEL. What you see is, yeah, this pathway is up in the DEL infused uh, monkeys in their NK cells, but it's transient. It comes up at one hour, but then it's back to, to normal. So, you know, it's, it's not a persistent uh, induction of the killing pathway. So this was not uh, very uh, satisfying. In addition, we did network analysis, uh, which showed uh, trail-mediated apoptosis and FC gamma receptor-mediated necroptosis mm -hmm. uh, are also induced in NK cells uh, one hour after VRCO7523. LS del uh, mutant, uh, but once again, it's transient. It comes up, it goes back down, and we're seeing this antiviral effect over four days. So we said, well, maybe what we're seeing is an in vivo, uh, basically a prozone effect. For those of you who have done uh, ADCC assays, the prozone effect is that when you go to higher and higher concentrations of antibody, you often see a decrease in the killing effect. And what we can show here is that prozone effect is really uh, augmented uh, with the DEL antibody. So at higher concentrations, your killing uh, comes down. And the thought is that this is because uh, if you've got a high affinity receptor occupancy on your uh, NK cell, uh, and you've got excess antibody that's also binding to your target cell, and you've got plasma virus bound here, basically this NK cell can't recognize this target cell uh, because everything's already bound up. In addition, it could be that there's just multivalent binding uh, in that you're with free plasma virus, you're getting this type of situation where you're not getting actual uh, delivery of, of the, the killing uh, signal uh, to the target cell. So just to put it graphically, when we do ADCC assays, we usually think that this is what's going on. Uh, you know, the the pre-armed uh, uh, effector cell is recognizing the target, uh, or it's coming along and, and recognizing the antibody uh, on the target cell, and that leads to cell death. But in this situation where you've got lots of uh, anti or, uh, virus around and a very high affinity uh, uh, interaction with your FC gamma receptor, maybe this is what's happening and you're actually not getting killing. However, you know, historically, you know, when, when it, within the HIV field, whenever we make the LALA mutation, we always assume we're, we're just affecting uh, uh, ADCC, and this is all related to ADCC. But, you know, this, I didn't show you the data, but it also, the LALA mutation affects uh, antibody-dependent cellular phagocytosis. Um, so is, is that the, the real operative thing? Well, the, the fact is that if that were the, the reason, we should have seen opposite effects of the LALA and the DEL, because the DEL actually increases uh, phagocytosis also. But how about complement? So remember, one of my first slides, I showed that both of these antibodies wiped out complement. So maybe the, the added antiviral uh, effect uh, is actually all due to complement. So we haven't looked at this yet. I know this is uh, you know, disappointing to everyone, so we don't know. Uh, but uh, clearly further work is needed to determine if a decreased complement binding results in the decreased antiviral effect of the LALA and DEL modified antibodies, uh, and we're moving forward with, with some of those experiments. So in conclusion, the in vivo antiviral effect uh, of VRCO7523 is mediated by a combination of both plasma virus neutralization, entry inhib inhibition, and FC-dependent functions. An FC modification which enhances FC gamma receptor affinity had an unexpected effect 
of decreasing overall in vivo antiviral activity. Whether this will limit the use of antibodies with similar mutations and cure strategies needs to be determined, and further work is needed to define the mechanism of this decreased antiviral effect of DEL-modified antibodies in vivo. And, and before uh, Romas' head starts spinning and he has a conniption, you know, what about uh, the latent reservoir? So, you know, we did all of this work uh, in a situation where we have a huge uh, amount uh, of plasma virus. So, what about individuals on antiretroviral therapy? So, if you wiped out uh, all of this, uh, thereby wiping out uh, the plasma virus so that you don't have that uh, plasma virus pool that may be affecting the assays, then uh, the question becomes, might ADCC actually uh, be uh, uh, more operative uh, in this scenario. And Romas, I put that in just for you. <laughs> uh, so with that, I'd like to thank a number of people, but really it was Mangai Asakan uh, in my lab. Actually, she, she works for John, but she's been doing this project in my lab, uh, and she did the vast majority of this work. Thank you. <laughs>